Friday's games. It's going to be the East and Midwest regionals. The first game is going to tip off third seed Purdue, 15 seed St. Peter's. Going to be inside the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, Friday night, 709 p.m. Eastern. Purdue listed as a 12 and a half point favorite. What will, here's your question, David Cobb, what will Shaheen Holloway be doing Sunday? Coaching in the Elite Eight or accepting the Seton Hall job? I would love to say coaching in the Elite Eight, but I think he'll probably be accepting the Seton Hall job. <laughs> and by the way, like I didn't, I was not bothered by Kevin Willard suggesting in his post game press conference after Seton Hall's loss that he would like for Shaheen Holloway to be his successor. When you're operating in that hemisphere, to put a Memphis spin on it, it would be like, um, it would be like Penny Hardaway saying that he wanted the the Rhodes coach to be his next, uh, his successor at Memphis. Like the the hemispheres in which St. Peter's and Seton Hall operate are so distant that it's not out of line to publicly suggest that like, oh, this coach at St. Peter's should be the coach here. You know, uh, Holloway played it at Seton Hall. Holloway was an assistant at Seton Hall very recently under Kevin Willard. They know each other well. And anybody who's ever uh, watched MAAC basketball understands that just because St. Peter's is competing in the NCAA tournament this month with all these other big programs doesn't make it like those other big programs. So I don't, I don't think it was like weird or like inappropriate, like maybe, maybe, maybe don't, but like at the same time saying that, that Shaheen Holloway should be the next coach at, at Seton Hall. I think even the people at St. Peter's would say, wow, that's amazing. Now we can put it on our, on our pages and on our, you know, Wikipedia that one of our coaches went on to, Coaching the Big East uh, after leading our team to the Sweet 16, you know, I, I don't know. I just it, it was it doesn't bother me that much. And I think he's certainly going to be the guy. Right. But um, I don't think that St. Peter's has got a third dose of magic up its sleeve. It's just but I am picking them against the spread. Twelve and a half is a big number. Purdue gives up a lot of points and you got to respect the Peacocks to a certain degree. I think you got to respect the Peacocks to a certain degree. Like I was unbothered by what Kevin Willard said. Um, after that NCAA tournament game, I saw people arguing about it. Like, you you, you can't uh, you can't just throw Shaheen Holloway out there like that. I mean, I, I guess it's unusual to do it. Like, this guy's still coaching in the NCAA tournament, and you're already you know giving him the Seton Hall job or doing your best to help him get it. Like, is is that a little weird? I, certainly, it's unusual. But on the other hand, like, we're all adults here. Like, do you, you think the people at St. Peter's don't know that if Kevin Willard leaves Seton Hall, uh, Shaheen Holloway is almost certainly going to get that I, job? I bet his players will be so happy for him. I bet they'll be like, oh, this is great. Our coach oh, you ready? Yeah. Big East job. Congrats, let me, man. Like, let, let me take it a step further. You know what his players are going to say? Oh, Talk great. With you. <laughs> yes. They're going to try. He'll take a few of them with him. He won't be able to take all of them, but he'll take a, I bet he takes a few of them. And so, yeah, I, I'm assuming Shaheen Holloway isn't the only peacock going to Seton Hall. He'll take a few peacocks with him. Um, so I saw people arguing about it going back and forth. Like he was over the line. I don't think he was over the line. He just said something that coaches in his position don't normally say. I, you know, then the other side of it was, why are you out there bashing Kevin Willard? All he did was tell the truth. Well, he kind of told the truth. He didn't tell the whole truth. He said, um, you know, um, I'm going to sit down with my agent and and look at everything, which was the truth. And then he added, but I don't even know who my agent's talking to. That's not the truth. <laughs> like that, that part wasn't true. So let's not like give him too much credit for telling the truth. Like he was just being honest. He wasn't being completely honest. Um, I, either way, like I didn't get worked up about it one way well, or the you other. Know, it, it, this is the way these things work, right? Lincoln Riley had no idea right. that USC <laughs> wanted to hire him until after the big 12 championship game ended. It just came out of nowhere. You know? Yeah. That's, that's also a lie. Like uh, these coaches, they all have agents who are very connected, very good and paid well. And uh, it, I, I always believe, like, in that situation, Lincoln Riley has not had a single conversation with anybody at USC, but his agent has had every conversation with somebody at USC and worked out every detail. And then he goes back to, um, to Lincoln Riley and says, hey, here's what we got. If you're interested in doing it, bang, 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 bang. And then when your season's over, you get on a Zoom call. Hey, good to see you. Um, yeah, everything sounds good. I'm excited. You get it done just like that. Um, 
you know, a lot of people, not just coaches, but people who have agents, even in our industry, like work out contracts with well before they've ever actually talked to the people on the other side because the agent handles the whole thing. So is it true that Kevin Willard hadn't talked to Maryland before um, his season was over? Sure. I'm, I'm assuming so. But his agent had all that stuff in the works and Kevin Willard knew who his agent was talking to. I'll take Purdue to win the game. I'll take St. Peter's plus the 12 and a half. 